everybody. So today we are going to be going through one episode of The X-Files. And this is a Halloween episode and it's all about a rogue machine that starts to think for itself. Let's go see what that actually means and where they got it right and where they got it wrong. It's scanning him and it knows who he is. And there's lots and lots of buttons. Termination of the CO. I love how when there is any kind of technology in any show or movie, they think having lots of buttons popping up and, and flashing means that something is going on. I have yet to see any real computer that randomly has a bunch of buttons flashing um, that isn't trying to tell you something is wrong. It's really good that he has his computer screen specifically turned so that you can see what is on it. This also looks like a very poor image quality, so if you really wanted to zoom in and read what was on the computer screen from a system like this, it would most likely not work. 7.35 p.m. There is a swipe card on the inside of a bathroom. Why would the swipe card be on the inside of the bathroom and not the outside of the bathroom? If you needed a code to get out of the room, it's more of a panic room than anything else. Oh no, the cameras caught it. But what did they catch? File deleted. Somebody has to announce what the computer is doing or the computer suddenly tells you uh, what, what it's doing, uh, mostly for drama, because obviously computers don't tell you what they're doing, they just do them. And they don't talk to you in scary Darth Vader uh, words. I love that how this elevator okay. is saying every yeah. floor that it hits. Hopefully they're not in, in a building that has 87 floors or something. Ninth floor. False alarm. Tenth floor. Eleventh floor. No one's going to be nervous that this elevator just stopped working. Okay. <laughs> District of Columbia phone search. What does that even mean? It's on a CCTV. CCTV systems are usually really, really basic. They don't have high fidelity imagery. I don't know which phone they are searching since the phone they just used was in the elevator. Aha! So apparently they were doing a search for maybe facial recognition? Maybe they were trying to find Scully's face and figure out who she was and get her phone number. Uh, since the date on this episode is 1993, facial recognition would not be that fast or sophisticated, especially, again, on a CCTV image. Still not quite sure why they were searching for Scully's phone number since she's right there in, in the elevator. But whoever did it would have had to override the COS. What's the COS? The central operating system that runs the building. Ooh, we were throwing acronyms the around the COS. The just have to say, if there was just one central operating system for the entire building, that is a huge security risk. I'm assuming each floor has different offices. Each each floor even maybe has different businesses on one floor. If they were all on one central operating system, that is an easy hack. I mean, granted, it's 1993, but... They should still know better. Somebody wanted to override the COS. What would they? Well, first you'd have to break the access codes, which, well, let's just say it wouldn't be easy. <laughs> you have to break the one access code for this entire building. Wow. I can't believe, I mean, in 93, did we really expect that to stop anything? I'm going to say no. I'm going to say no and say that this was just um, TV magic because... Oh, you gotta you gotta crack the one password for the entire building, and every computer system in this entire building is apparently connected to the central operating system. Oh, I'm sorry, the COS, because we want we want to sound fancy here. What about the phone lines? Does the COS monitor all phone calls? Yes, it does. Wow. Ah, ah, no! And the phone lines are on it too. Good gracious, you wouldn't even have to be there to hack into it. You could just use the phone lines. 
Head exploding. <laughs> what? Is this system related to the one in your corporate building? Variation on the theme. In your opinion, how many people know the system well enough to override it? Finally, the bonus question. Not many is the answer. Could someone have uh, hacked into the system? <laughs> no, not your average phone freak, that's for sure. But there's plenty of kooks out there. Data travelers, electro wizards, techno anarchists. Anything's possible. Literally, none of those words uh, are really that popular. The, the statement just made here that only a few people would be able to hack into it, I, I probably would doubt that. Especially since they were um, silly enough to make this central operating system for an entire building, all connected together. So interoperability and Internet of Things is sort of in that same vein. Uh, this is why cybersecurity is a very big uh, deal for those things, to make sure that they are secure. It says the ability to connect the unconnected, to make juxtapositions, to see relationships where others cannot. Ah, is she talking about a knowledge graph? Being able to make connections where um, others can't, making meaning out of, of data? I think she's talking about a knowledge graph, folks. Okay, so when we were seeing in later in, in previous screens, COS scanning, an operating system doesn't necessarily scan something you would need some kind of app or, or something on the operating system to be scanning something. I guess they're they're spying on Scully and uh, their computer has to tell them that they are intercepting the data. File opened. Ah. <laughs> ah, my computer needs to tell me every time I open, <laughs> open a file. <laughs> Could you imagine? I don't get so old, especially if it was in a creepy voice like that. The file is opened. It's a very scary moment. Too bad they don't have an actual file name because file one is not that descriptive. So that's actually true. When you are talking, you can actually tell who the speaker is to a certain extent because of the cadence in their voices. This is actually pretty common in music theory and uh, voice recognition software. So if you are you know, trying to understand people's cadence, uh, there is certain linguistic properties that, that people use. Uh, this is just your typical speech pattern. But if you can actually have enough data to understand what those unique speech patterns are, you can, with some certainty, understand if there is a likelihood, notice the words I'm using, uh, to say that it is the same voice. Right now they only have two files and both of them sound very artificial anyways, so I would actually say they don't have enough data to make that determination at this point. Now we have the physical evidence. They have evidence. She literally just circled the very end of, of the speech pattern. When you're trying to compare two pieces of data, you would actually overlap them and find the diff, the difference between the two, because that's going to tell you if there is a, a wide, significant amount of difference. If there is a significant amount of difference, it's um, probably, it, the probability is low that it is the same, again, on a larger data set. And if you are looking at the difference and it is very small, then you might have a higher probability that it is the same person. So what she just Highlighted would not, wouldn't tell you anything. I'm gonna bring them along. I need this one, Mulder. This does not bode well. If this was Star Trek, he'd be in a red shirt. Red shirt is on the case. Yeah, that wouldn't have happened. <laughs> Going up. Oh, well, now he's in the dreaded Second elevator. Floor. Can I help you? FBI. I love how that security guard didn't even say, oh, by the way, the guy just ran through. Welcome back, Brad. Yeah, Brad. You're not equipped with a voice synthesizer. Huh. <laughs> what is my user level? That is now at the discretion of the operating system. Oh, okay, this reminds me of um, a 1980s movie called War Games with my Matthew Broderick, you do not have a voice synthesizer. Uh, why would you need it? 
unless you are um, using not just a voice synthesizer, which is giving the computer a voice to, to read out something, it would also need some kind of voice processing so that you can talk back to it. Now, this is very common for us today with Siri and other things, but in 1993, it wasn't that common. And if you had an operating system for an entire building, why would it need to talk to you? <laughs> this is, now we're going into the world of sci-fi. Red shirt, no! I think they were going down the trope of the machine trying to think for itself. Again, an operating system, in, in, in no place in this entire show have they talked about any kind of artificial intelligence or machine learning. It is literally an operating system for programs to run off of. And thus far, we haven't even seen any kind of real programs on this thing. I doubt it would have the smarts to be able to think on its own or install anything um, without anyone else knowing about it. What are you doing? That's going to help! Screaming! Pull the plug! That works! Oh no, but there's a backup power source! Which you actually should. <laughs> Red shirt, run! Oh, you're in an elevator, you can't run. Oh no! Now it's a killer robot! Why? Has he been deemed a threat? Who told it? Here's here's another thing, machine learning time. If there was any kind of machine learning on this, what criteria did a person give this operating system for it to understand what is a threat? A machine can't understand what a threat is all on its own. You have to program into it what is deemed a threat. Even if it's malfunctioning and it's somehow thinking that this FBI agent is posing some sort of threat. Who programmed that? Can't think for itself unless a person or somebody programs in what's a threat. Program executed. Okay, so it just said that there was a program. There must have been a program that said if there is a threat, drop the elevator. Again, pretty sure that would not be uh, safe to, to program into a computer of any sort, even if it was an actual threat, dropping the elevator is not a good idea. <laughs> Begin algorithm code program. Okay. Be <laughs> So begin algorithm code program. So an algorithm is code, so it's kind of redundant to have both. And I don't know what a algorithm code program would be. A program can be created with code and with algorithms. This seemed like somebody read a, a computer science book and uh, grab some words and put it on the screen. And also remember, the machine is talking about this right now. So it has to tell you which program it's opening at all times. Granted, user code level seven. Now I can put in the virus. Not bad, Agent Mulder. The technology of this machine is of enormous scientific interest. The machine's a monster, Scully. It's already killed two people. They won't <laughs> Okay, so apparently some shady government organization is interested in this central operating system that was apparently just installed in some random building. There, I'm not quite sure why this agent is thinking that he had to infiltrate this building in order to get his hands on the operating system. It seemed like the a uh, corporate guy in the very beginning would have been perfectly happy selling the government um, whatever operating system they have. Also, if it can be manipulated this easily, why would the government be interested in it? That makes no sense. Be able to handle it any better than Will Check did. Also, they are absolutely making it sound like this machine is is acting on its own volition, that it has sentience, 
sentience is actually or what would make an, an artificial intelligence actually intelligent. Uh, however, nothing in this episode has even pointed to that in any way, shape, or form. So I, I really take issue when people point to machines as um, the things that are thinking and doing when really it is a programmer or somebody that has coded it to be able to do something. Now, a machine can learn things that need to be corrected, that is for sure, but it's, the, the machine is very rarely acting on its own. Ooh, floppy disk. Do you hear what it's saying? The computer is basically begging for them not to kill it with a virus. Even if there was some kind of sentience, would it have the concept of pity? Of, of sacrifice? These are very human emotions. This is definitely not something that machines understand, even today. And it's talking as it's it's dying, and there's just a bunch of numbers, and it's very dramatic. And everything is just going haywire, I guess. The cert. Oh, apparently this thing that we've been seeing the whole time that was showing how the computer was talking was a search scan monitor. What was it searching and scanning? Okay, Mulder and Scully save the day, yet again. Yay, and now the building just gets rebooted. Apparently, even when you don't have a central operating system, everything can just turn on mysteriously. It's actually also not the case if you have something that is so heavily integrated into all of your HVAC systems and, and other electrical and those types of systems in a building, turning everything back on after the computer has gone down is a nightmare. I hope you enjoyed that. I know I certainly did. Just keep in mind when there is machine learning involved, when there is artificial intelligence being thrown around, at the end of the day, you have to be very careful because the people and the data sets that you are teaching the machine on really are uh, what triggers weird occurrences coming to, to bear but this is very much science fiction. There are very few computers on the planet that could even remotely be considered true artificial sentient uh, intelligence. So with that, I hope you have a great Halloween and I'll catch you next time.